Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. This is a perfect day to leave on a wagon train. So you were saying you've been on this ride most of your life? Yes, sir. When you were a kid then? I, With yes. your parents? Or? Uh, yep. My dad rode on the second ride, and my granddad, my dad and granddad both rode the second ride and rode for years and we started and the first year there was not a lot to it it was more of a challenge than a ride um, there was about i don't know a dozen people that just got the idea up to see if it could be done let's just see if we can ride to the rodeo hunting something to do and uh, they took off and rode it in five days and so the next year it rolled around and they just decided they'd do it again. It turned into tradition. So growing up, everybody around here that had a horse or a mule or a wagon, come March, they went to the rodeo to Montgomery. Where we just left from, within about five miles from where the original ride left from. And it stayed strong and steady for years and years and years. And the the ones that started it got older and died off. Some of the kids kept riding, a lot of them didn't. But we've uh, we've worked pretty hard the last couple years try to get people to come from out of state and help support it and keep it going. When I was a kid, we'd leave with, just depending on the weather, but 30 to 50 wagons and 200 plus horse riders. Most of the time we'd have 250, 300 horse riders, and they'd go all the way. And we'd ride that in five days. The longest day was 42, uh, 42, 43 miles. Being that the traffic's so bad and cell phones, it's more dangerous. We changed the route to stay on all back country roads, dirt roads. Not very little of this rides on a main main highway, but it added miles to it to do that. So that's why we stretch the days out. People don't ride as much as they used to either. Used to, people were avid riders. They rode every every weekend somewhere. People don't get to do that anymore. So they're not in shape and their stock's not in shape. But used to, we'd ride it in five days. It's 165 miles we rode it in five days. The weather has hurt us, the wintertime weather, because nobody's got to work their stock and People are really worried that uh, their stock would not make it, so they they decided not to come. Usually February is not quite so harsh, you know, so people can work their stock just a little bit. But a lot of these mules hadn't been hooked since fall. I started out as a kid in a saddle. Um, my sister used to ride this ride every step bareback. Really? Yes, sir. On a, on a horse? On a horse, yep. Yeah. My mom and dad raised quarter horses, and we always had big quarter horses we rode, and uh, and I would ride, and she she would ride bareback most of the time. Rode many a trip bareback. Me and her done this every year growing up. But when I was, uh, I think I worked a wagon to Montgomery the first time when I was 12 years old. Started with a wagon when I was 12. There was just always something about the mules I liked, and I wanted a pair of mules, and finally got a pair, and I've been been working a wagon ever since. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at RuralHeritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452.
That's toll free, 877-647-2452. Well, most people get up about 4.30 in the morning, 4.30, 5 o'clock, and come out and feed their mules and get them brushed and curried up and ready to gear and gear them up. And usually by daylight, people are starting to hook their mules to wagons and go back in, eat breakfast, and get ready. And we pull trucks up at 6.30 or 7 o'clock every morning. It's different times depending on how far we have to pull up. We pull trucks up and go to our next camp, and leave them and get on a bus we have that brings us back to our wagons and stop and get, get ice or biscuits, whatever, and come back to the wagons and start the day. We try to be riding by 9 o'clock every day. Usually if we can do that, we can be in camp sometime between 3 and 5 o'clock every day. Don't have to push too hard. Getting an education. Yes, sir. I was about 15 years old. My mother and dad come on the ride, and I'd come, and this used to be our vacation. We'd go ride the whole week and go to the rodeo at the end. We used to go two or three nights to the rodeo. That was just our vacation. That's what we did, you know. Just a good way to, to smell the roses. I'll just put it that way. You know, you got five to seven miles an hour and you can see all the sights and you just enjoy the country and it's so fast moving around. But you know, and I just I love it, you know. And just uh, hard to explain. And it, I went for years by myself, you know, and then I, my brother started going and so we got into it and five of us at one time was on this ride. That was really, really, really nice. And uh, two of my brothers that that went on the ride, that they have already passed. Yeah. So we got those memories, you know. Right. This, this is, uh, I don't know. It's kind of like this is kind of like a memorial to me, you know. I understand. For them and his dad. And the years that I rode, it was always raining, and, and of course in the south in March, it's going to be. And climate weather, it's going to come and go. And it's always raining, wind blowing. And uh, a lot of these horses, like I say, I just got mine out of the pasture and put shoes on him and uh, took him to Montgomery. And we had all those had ponchos on. And so uh, you can imagine trying to get on some fresh horses that really haven't been rode a whole lot. There's about five or six of us rode together. And trying to get in the saddle and then put the horses that never seen ponchos. Yeah, right. right. And right, it was right. uh, entertainment. In I bet it was, yeah. John, uh, he uh, actually what happened with John, he went to Montgomery. And see, after those first three years, and of course the kids come along later, I was working and I would go pick them up in Montgomery, but I didn't ride. I didn't have, we had jobs and stuff and couldn't. And John, uh, on the way to Montgomery one year, was riding a big old bait mare that we'd raised. And a guy in the wagon said, you know, son, I'd like to ride your mare. How about you just drive my team for a little while and let me out of this wagon? I said, sure. And I mean, he was probably 12 years old. Uh -huh. He come home and told his mother, said, Mom, I want a team. I want a team in the wagon. I really like that. So a neighbor who <coughs> had the big bells and mares was raising some mules, and we went down, and John just fooling with the mules there. But he's always, he loves to drive. He, he rode, but his real forte is driving team. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is fieldwork showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard. 
feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. Wagon train started. Forney wagon train started a little town called Forney. A little community. It's just a crossroads there in the road. Uh, when I was a kid, my grandmama run a store there. She run it about 50 years. So even after my granddad passed, of he passed when I was younger. I never did really know him, but uh, she ran that store there, and of course in the summer I'd stay with her, help her pump gas and different things. And, uh, she, uh, hey, she always had a lot of company come around, and a man that started the cider club there, two of them, one of them's name was Robert Matt Daniel, and one of them's name was Boots Sneed. He was a relative of mine, and uh, they formed the cider club, and Boots come in the store and he had talked to my grandmother about starting a wagon train in Montgomery. And uh, so one thing led on another, and I was a little young boy, I was about eight or nine years old. I listened to what he said. And uh, so he finally he got around to telling me a little about it. Of course, my mom and dad, they always worked and they didn't participate in the horses, but they liked to see, you know, me do it. But, uh, we went a couple years there, I didn't get to go. Uh, when I got up about 10 years old, I was about two miles from home. My dad had a little cattle cattle farm, and, and we hung out over there. And I was over there one day riding my pony. I had a pretty good sized Welsh pony. And uh, there was a lady pulled up to the fence in the car, and she got out, and she told me her name. And, uh, she told me her name and I got to talking to her and she said, uh, I'm Barbara Riley. And I said, uh, well, where you live, Miss Riley? And she said, well, I've just moved in here. Uh, we moved from Florida and my husband is going to put in a veterinarian practice here. And one thing led on to another, you know, and she said, uh, well, do you have any horses you want to get rid of? I said, no, this is the only little horse I have. She said, well, I'd love to have one for my little boy. I said, he's a little younger than you. I said, uh, would you like to sell yours? I said, well, yeah, you know. So I, I sold it to her. So I went on to town. And Mom worked with okay. a lady down there, and she said, uh, I, I know where Mark's yeah, another like horse is. And she said, where? I said, my daughter's going bed, off to school. And said, She's got to get rid of her horse. Okay. She's going to college. So my dad took me down there, and, and when, uh, he bought it for me. Well, my, of course, it was my money where I'd sold my other one. But um, coincidence how it started me. She called me one day, and she said, Are "You, when are you going to be over to, at your dad's place there? So me and daddy went over there, and she came by, and she said, This Montgomery trip you've been telling me about, she said, uh, if I could get up uh, one more horse and us an old camper or something to sleep in, she said, I'd like to go and do that. And uh, she said, would you like to do it? And I said, yeah, sure, I'd like to do it. She said, well, I'm going to come over and talk to your mom and uh, see if she'll let you go. And uh, she came over and she asked mother, and I was, I was the youngest of five kids. And she asked mother, she said, you care if Mark would go on this trip with us? And the mother kind of got to know him. She said, well, sure, he can go, you know, like that. And uh, so everything worked out right there, 10 year old, when I started going. But I, I did miss two years. Uh, but so far, uh, 45 years at this trip right here. It'll be my 45th trip uh, to Wagon Train to Montgomery. So, but I've had a good time. 
But uh, my dad worked in a at Forney there. Two men named po po uh, Porter Sneed and Roland Sneed. They owned a mule barn. And uh, back in them days, they furnished all mules for people at farm with mules. Yeah. They traded mules there at that mule barn. And my dad worked there. He shared a lot of his stuff with me, but I always mess with mules. And, uh, and then this Boot Sneed fella, he is related to me. He had a barn right below the old barn. And when I was coming up in my teenage years, I stayed there and I traded horses and mules myself. Uh, but I've always done a little trading. I, I don't know, I enjoy the challenge to, to a new one, you know. Right. But uh, I, uh, I don't regret nothing. I mean, as far as these rides, I've enjoyed them. My mom always told me, she said, go as long as you can, son. That's what she told me years ago. That's good advice. Yeah, she said, just go as long as you can. Pretty good little wagon train, isn't it? My mom always raised us that, uh, you know, if you were going to do something, you done it, no matter what, what, what the weather or the consequences or the job or what. And so when we come to ride, we ride. If it, if it's 20 degrees and sleeting when this ride comes around, we ride. If it's 80 degrees and beautiful like today, we ride. But it, so it doesn't matter what the weather's doing. We went in snow, we went in sleet, we went in tornadoes, pouring rain, and beautiful, beautiful weather like today. But we ride. So the wagon makes it nice for that because if you can get your team harnessed and get in the wagon, you're pretty well set. We'll ride through a lot of farmland today. This is a pretty big farming area, a lot of a lot of cotton fields, soybeans. You farm for a living yourself? I do. Used to row crop. We pretty well cut the row crop out. We still fool with a little bit. We rent a lot of land out now, but we raise raise livestock, buy and sell and trade mules and have some draft mares and raise some draft horses and draft mules and then we have old line heritage hogs, U Rock, Hampshire and Yorkshire old line hogs and cross them for a real high end, high quality meat hog. Sell those to the restaurant industry. Just a little of this and a little of that, try to make a living. We get to go and ride with a lot of good people on these rides. We wagon train from Missouri to North Carolina, from Kentucky, back down through Alabama, so. Do you usually drive three abreast? Um. It depends on the ride. If, if it's just like a two or three or five day ride, we don't, but on these longer rides, we do. A third mule really, really takes a lot of pressure off. You got some hills tomorrow. We do. We've got some, some big hills. That really, for the, the the second, third, and fourth days, we'll be, be in the mountains. So we'll come out of the mountains on the fourth day. And if you, uh, with a pretty big wagon, if you, uh, you don't have three mules, it'll, two can handle it, two big mules, these, these mules can handle it, two of it, but you wear them down pretty quick. We still have a lot of miles to cover after those mountains, so three really helps take the pressure off. Yep. couple years or three or four years they rerouted this ride and made it uh, the length of it longer plus the time you know went from five days to ten and this is it's more enjoyable you can relax you don't have to ride far every day I mean I rode as, back in the old days we rode as, uh, from 30 to 35 one day on Monday 40 40 miles and that's hard a, yeah uh, that's yeah. just hard to do and,
We've had some wrecks here and there going down through there in the last years. We one year had a wagon horse tied to the back of one wagon, jerked the wagon off in a big old ditch, turned over. You know, we've had some things happen, but yeah. we've been fortunate and we hadn't had nobody get bad, you know, hurt and stuff. But we've been blessed with, with the accidents and stuff. We've yeah. Had. I've had to go home a couple years. Uh, family deaths over the years, you know, but sure. other than that, I've, I've hung in there 45 years. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.